and then that right there is you got to give them a break on that because the frontal lobe they don't have that frontal lobe yeah i really do think that's true i don't think some people really have empathy or they they just they don't understand it that's a hard that's a hard thing to say though because you know right you know you have someone up here last time that is denying the the frontal lobe theory uh, or fact you know he did not he did not uh hop in the panel ever again uh i mean you know i mean he came that's nice. that, uh, yeah that's like 99 percent of black people though yeah. the frontal lobe is 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 just like it it, it, it's not only empathy, but it's 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 a lot of different things that come from that frontal lobe, and and when you don't got it, you just don't got it. Like you, it's it's nothing that can be done. Like now, maybe religion, devout religion, can like give you an external frontal lobe, or the fear of harsh punishments. Could give you yes, a external no. frontal lobe, but if you ain't got it, you ain't got it, Jack. <laughs> and, you know and and people, when you describe when you describe a lot of traits that some people have, like if you weren't if you didn't assign a race to it, like if you were to describe a certain person and be like he has these traits, you would say that's a bad person, but. That's the that's an ugly thing to say, you know, about a whole group of people. Bad people, yeah. No, a lot of some people are 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 bad people. Like they they, they are. Like most some people I know, some men that I know, one of their claims to fame is how many people they've hurt or wrong. Like having wronged somebody or fucked over somebody or physically hurt somebody gets you like a status amongst some men. Yeah, the the lack of caring about an, your fellow human is a is a badge of honor. Like the yeah your, your callousness towards the next man. Is, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and it's when not exclusive do... to uh, blacks in the US. So you can also hear that, that word from one. Listen, in, I'm not gonna lie to you. When yeah. I was in this Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My bad. I don't think any. I don't think anybody's saying that um, it's exclusive. We just saying that it's 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 um, prominent. It's, yeah, it's prominent, or it's um, it's 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 um, part and parcel. Of being, yeah, not, being no, no, um, uh, what I'm saying, it's not exclusive to Sunman in in the U.S. It's also the same with Sunman from any part of the world in, oh, okay. in America yeah. and in Africa. When I was in, when I was in the streets, all my traps had a rule that you couldn't do any business with the Sun Man over fifty dollars. Damn. Damn! Holy shit! Wait, why though? Why though? He already knew, he knew the outcome. He knew what that shit well, meant to. I, I live. I live was in Ohio. Robin? I live in Ohio, so a lot of northeastern Ohio and Ohio is mixed. So, like, you, it's not segregated or anything like that. And any time that if you're not white and you start making money, you're going to get robbed. So it was just a, it was just an aura of business that they couldn't ask you for $5,000 worth of stuff. And then they show up and rob you for $5,000 worth of stuff. Mm. The only business you could do was outside of the trap, and it had to be fifty dollars or less. Wow. Yeah, I mean, some men are, are, very, are predators too. Like we, we, um, you can see why, um, like a lot of cultures would would definitely not want some men around. Man, our our predation is just natural. Like it's. We don't even like. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah. natural to us, like. Yeah. Hey, Arch, so I don't even need to try. You, yeah, so you don't Arch. have. To, we don't even have to be trained to to be like how you're. So yeah. so Arch, to to hammer this point down from where I'm where I'm from, 
Um, my traps were in Ravenna, Ohio. And uh, back in the day, we like we just we were, you know, we were scared about stuff. We had a guy knock on our door in the middle of the day and we didn't answer it. He came back with like 17 dudes at like two in the morning that same night. And uh, I, at the time when I was a criminal, I was moving like 10, 10 a day of, uh, of weed. So like 10 pounds, please. Yeah. 10 pounds a day. Okay. Were you breaking it down or you were just selling them, um, selling them whole. Uh, so we would wholesale and we'd break it down. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the 10 pounds a day was, was broken down, but we would take orders for whatever anyone needed. We supplied the the whole city at that time. But the, the point, like the point that I'm making is, is like some random dude that no one knew showed up at the house because me, my brother, all the guys in my trap were white. And uh, we lived like literally like four blocks from from where the sons were. So mm-hmm. like, you know, the sons get jealous. So like, they showed up at one day, decided they thought they were gonna try rob us. And you know, white people where I live is considered to be soft. Everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. I, I well I can't say for anywhere else, but well, like, no, how is it in Philly? I don't know Philly. I don't know Philly. It's Philly because y'all got mob, right? Don't you got the mob in Philly? Um, we have the it's mob. It's pretty out much here. dismantled. That's what I'm. It's not. They don't really have like a huge presence. We have a mob out here. My my older cousin went to to the feds twice in the nineties and the two thousand once in the nineties and once in the two thousands for the for the mob. Cleveland mob and Youngstown mob are strong. Yeah, if it's if it's the mob, I can see sons not wanting to go anywhere near that. But like, if you ain't affiliated like that, then uh, sons just sons are gonna look at you like uh like like some food to be honest. Well, the crazy thing is, I was affiliated with a black gang. Oh, like, I, was, I, I ran with the Bloods, but still, the fact of the matter was is that like we were becoming the big fish in in the city that we were in, and like in Ravenna, you have the avenues and you have Cleveland Road. So, like, the allotment is what's on Cleveland Road. They heard some white dudes had some had some some shit coming in. They were all about it. Like, seventeen deep show up my house at, at two in the morning, trying to knock on the door for us to answer. Clearly, that didn't happen, and we clearly had you know we had things to protect that, but. We made a rule that anyone associated with our organization could not sell to blacks that were anything under anything smart under move. Bucks. Smart, very yeah. smart move. Very True. smart, yeah. Very smart move, man. Um, you, you you just can't listen. You can't trust blacks, man. You can't trust them. Like um, I've I've been through it all with black selling weed and shit, man. Um, and I'm black. It just, it just they they just gonna um they gonna steal your they gonna they gonna they gonna steal your shit they gonna break into your shit they gonna um get like one thing about blacks too they they rob you in a, a myriad of ways like say you got like let's just give you a round number let's say you got ten dubs because back in the day it was it wasn't three fifths it was dubs and dimes right so you got ten dubs right that's two hundred dollars you you that you trying to make whatever blah blah blah. In the hood, you getting fifteen, and if you get seventeen, if a sub man give you seventeen, that's that's big. So you getting fifteens and seventeens all day, right? So they robbing you like that anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you're not gonna get two hundred off them twenty dubs ever in a million years selling weed in the sun neighborhood. You ain't gonna get ten people give you twenty. You will you you might get the one the, if you get twenty it's gonna be from your customers that work or your customers that ain't hood, you know what I'm saying? You know how everybody got customers that you know what I'm saying like old dudes that might work at the fucking post office just want to get high and they you know they get their weed on payday. They might yeah. give you straight money, but then the hood niggas, 
Listen, yes. I, I sold Knicks, man, and Nick, niggas would give me $4 for a Nick. Niggas ain't going to give you – niggas always going to short you in the hood. Always. Yeah, when I was looking for a deal. Yeah, when I did my little hustling, my little fake hustling, niggas, niggas never had straight cash, bro. Never. Never. Yeah. So, so when I was in the street, like, like honest to God, I didn't have that problem with blacks. But now that I'm in, I'm an electrician. I have my own business. Like, it's always black folks. They're always trying to negotiate for down prices. They're always trying to negotiate things. They're trying to find the loophole in the system to, to pay less. It's like, dude. Just to like, one up you in short, yeah. It's like, <laughs> dude, I, I, like, you want your panel and your service changed. Like, I, I have to pull permit. Like, it's four grand. Call any company you want. It's going to be six. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, just because you just because like we've done business before doesn't mean i'm gonna give you a 40 percent discount like that like it's based on the material like i can't help you like right you got overhead yeah like like honest to god like if it like like my two oldest sons are mixed like i at, like I'm 35. When I was young, like I, I lived in the Cleveland. I lived in the hood. I lived in the worst, the worst projects in Cleveland. I loved black people. Now that I'm 35, it's like, dude, I cannot, I can't trust you. The majority of black folks don't like white folks. The majority of black folks that I deal with want to try to get over on you. It's like, dude, like you're really ruining this. Like the only, the only time that you have, you don't have this problem with blacks is if they're like super elite like if i go to some like male black doctor if i tell him a price he's not gonna question me he's not gonna do some crazy stuff because i always bid a thousand or two thousand dollars under the, what the market is because i'm just a one like i own a business but i work from like i'm the only worker so like i don't have the overhead that everyone else has but if it's not a uh, if it's not some guy that went to college for 12 years, if it's just your random person that has a job, they're literally trying to do everything that they possibly can do to not pay like what it is. And I'm like, dude, like I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, I can't. Black people don't pay their bills either. Like, like, like black people, when I was younger, man, um, I would burn up a bank account, like get overdraft fees and I would just go to another bank and, and start getting another account and then get overdraft fees and get in the negative there and then go to another bank and get another account. Black folk, and I did that with cell phones. I mean, black folk just, we don't pay our bills. Like paying bills, is a, it, it doesn't register with us the same way that um, it registers with other people, man. Um, so, I mean, you're going to definitely have problems if you're, um, if you're um, dealing with black folk and, and, and doing business with black folk. Um, Definitely. Yeah, man. So sure? cash app. Nah. Definitely, man. Definitely Can you check happens. your cash app for me? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. Savvy. So Savvy, uh oh go ahead. My part. No, nah, go ahead. So Savvy, would you like would you say you, you hate black people today or What, what you think? It's everything. Who to you, bro? Yeah, Who to you? yeah, man. Shout out to Savage. Savage is doing big things, man. Here's my thing. Here's my thing, though, about about you saying that um, black folk, um, you were, you were, you were, you had um, like you were in the hood and, and black folk. You love black folk back in those days. You were in the hood and you love black folk. That um. All that time you was in the hood, a, a, a lot of times as a as a white boy, um, you get you get a lot of a white boy can, can get in the space where he get a lot of grace because you got different traits that blacks don't have. Like for instance, a, a white boy niggas go, niggas gonna like a white boy more than they like other niggas because the white boy is has more stand up. More dressed above board. 
amongst niggas. Now, the white boy might be a piece of shit, but amongst niggas, he more stand up than niggas because niggas are not, they, they don't get no credit for being stand up. You get credit for being grimy and shady. Um, so it's like niggas probably gonna like the white boy who's in the hood because they're like, yeah, that's my man. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he 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 a, he a good person and shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, the white dude has to try harder. Like any time that you're a white dude that's affiliated with blacks or part of a black gang, you get tried harder. So like you oh, like yeah. you don't have the opportunity to be wishy washy. Like you know, if if some black dudes grew up in a neighborhood together and they and one dude was shaky on one situation, he's gonna get a pass because you know whatever was going on. But if you're a non-black dude in a black gang or in a black mm-hmm. neighborhood, you're seen to be either some sort of evil person or weak. So. Any time that you see a white dude in a black place that ends up rising to the level, mm-hmm. majority of the time, those dudes are super solid because they get tried way harder. Like when it comes to like, ver- like out here in Ohio, because we're so mixed, you have gang initiations. The white dude's going to get a gang initiation that's way, way more time than your average person because you have people in the gang that don't like white people or you have people that think that white people are soft. So Mm -hmm. most of the time when you see a white dude that has elevated himself amongst black folks that's from the neighborhood or from the place they're from, they have been tried over and over and over again. So for the most part, they're stand-up people. But here's the thing about that. I I, 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 I 1,000% respect your... um testimony because you're a white dude but niggas try niggas like a mother i think that that's kind of like a um uh on a, a that's a full-time job man. yeah <laughs> like like you understand as a nigga your reputation is on the line in every interaction your whole shit not a piece of it not a portion of it all your chips is pushed in. Like, for instance, let me just give you an example. Say me, Javon, Mystic, we go to the club. We getting dressed. We getting ready to go to the club. We go to the club. We standing in line. There's some other niggas there. They mug, mean mugging or what you call ice grilling or whatnot. All our shit amongst each other is on the line. Like, if we don't handle that situation correct, uh, man, you know, we was at the club, man, niggas was mean mugging, shorty was scared, blah, 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 blah. We get in the club. Now we in the club. We chilling. There's some hoes there, blah, blah, blah. Yo, let's go holler at them hoes. We go over there holler at the hoes. Javon, he ain't talking. He's scared. He got, cat got his tongue. Man, you know that bitch ass nigga Javon was scared. Man, we had some old and it was like every interaction, your whole shit can get taken back to the review board and put on trial. You dig what I'm saying? It's not like and your whole shit is on the line. Like you a bitch or you a lame or da 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 da. For every little interaction, some men love telling everybody that you failed some test. Where they was out, or while we was here, or we was locked up, you failed this test. They love doing that. So it's like, I get that white boys get tested a lot and shit, but niggas, man, we put each other through the ringer, my nigga. You heard me? Yeah, yeah I don't I don't disagree with you, but I, are you affiliated with anything? You don't have to tell me if, what you're affiliated with if you are, but are you affiliated with I anything? mean, I'm just a regular, you know, we don't have gangs and stuff in, in D.C., so I'm just a regular, local, you know what I'm saying, guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so my experience is based on affiliation. So, like, inside the affiliation, you like, what you're saying outside might be 100% true. Like, I, I, I don't know. But inside the affiliation, anytime there was any sort of white person, because you're like 2% or 1%, you're getting sent on the 
on the crash out missions. You're being like, you have another member that doesn't agree, like, because the bylaws in like California say that you can't be white and like, obviously Ohio doesn't necessarily follow the exact same rules that like California or the original mother house follows. See, yeah, all you talking about that, like, I don't know anything about like that stuff. Yeah. Like gangs and initiation and shit. I don't know anything about that, man. I'm just listening to you. I don't know. I ain't even gonna lie. I don't know nothing about I, that. I man. just I, I just know Zopal, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so like like where I'm from and what I was doing, like I got tried the most because I was white. Now I, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure could that could I'm that sure. not necessarily be non-affiliated i i don't know because i've I've been affiliated for a long time but yeah like all the dudes that i knew that were scary that were more scary than i was was always like the one white dude that was around it was never like like i'm 35 so like the way things were things are now is not the way they were back when i was in the street i've been out the street 10 years but like back in the day, like white dudes got work. Like we got, we had to do work all the time. It was you talking about shootings and shit like that, violence. What are you talking about? Like what are you violence. talking about? Work? Stabbings? Like crashing, crashing out. Like, you, oh, like if there was something that had to be done that was going to risk you getting locked up or being injured, you were the first ones that had to to put up with it. Because so y'all was running. They had white boys running down. Oh shit! Well, there wasn't many of us like in, in the set that I'm involved in. There was only like two of us, but like from the people that I know from around where I'm at, like it was like there were blacks that did stuff, but like if there was a white attached to it, they were had to be involved. Like you couldn't be white and not be involved in in the crash out missions. Like when you listen to Chicago and like you listen to like what they do. You don't have very many whites that are popular from from Chicago. Ohio is way more mixed. Like you have way more integration and mixing between no, cultures. Yeah, yeah. So like there isn't a lot of whites, but there's more whites than like California or Chicago or other cities that have far more stricter rules. Cleveland is more laxed. Ohio, Akron, they're all there. It's way more relaxed. Like, just like when you go to prison here, you don't have the segregation that you have, like in the West Coast. So, that's I, crazy. I, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I, like, don't get me wrong. 1970s, if you were a white dude, any, any form of criminal, you didn't house with blacks. But in 2020, you're not getting violated or you're not getting like raped and shit. Yeah. You're not getting any sort of maltreatment because they house you with, with a son. Like Ohio doesn't have that, that like very critical racial like line. Like one of my best friends is uh, he's the GD and he's, he's white. He's a general. He's white. Like, we don't have the same rules out here, but if you are affiliated, you are more likely as a white person to be set up to go be sent out and do dumb stuff. Or well, here's my be, thing about 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 um sons, sons don't do shot calling like that, man. You ain't gonna tell no son, man, what to do, man. Um, and damn sure it's gonna be harder if you're a white boy. Like, I, 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 I get it, like, gangs and. shit but I just know some men. Some men, it's hard to be hard to have a shot caller culture with some men with hierarchies. Because some men, they, every little Indian in the hood can be a chief. Well, is but is you saying where you from? Some men follow. Hierarchies and shit. Mm. It's loosely, like, like I'm not saying that it's like uh, Larry Hoover back when he started the 
back when he started his uh, his his movement, but like there's m- like the best way to put it is is like there's still the wild west out here. Yeah, but, you ain't about to tell no son man what to do. I don't give a fuck who the fuck you is. But it's not thug it's, son man. It's, but yeah. it's not like Springfield, like where the Haitians are just wearing wild. Like there's somewhat organization going on out here, but not. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think I think the that like son, no nah, hell no, nah. it ain't nothing like them. Like, sons don't do structure. Anything that's structured, they don't do it well. And I don't give a fuck. If they got rules, if they got, um, you know, a fucking pamphlet with all the fucking rules and it, it, the, all that shit is just talk, window dressing. The way this shit operate is not going to be like that. So I'm, I've been a sun man all my life. Sun men are um, chaotic. There's a chaos about the, uh, about the way we are, especially when we're together in groups. And there's a um, like there's 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 a there's a crash out nature to us. Like as far as like some man gonna go, a some man gonna fucking go to the club and throw his life away at the club. Some man go to a baby shower, throw his life away at the baby. It ain't how can you have structure when yeah. a nigga might go to a baby shower and just shoot the shit up over because somebody said something. You yeah. can't have structure amongst motherfuckers like that. Too unpredictable. Yeah, too unpredictable, too um erratic, and plus too like um gossipy. Like if you the leader, like so you the leader, right? Say you the leader of a Sun Man crew and shit, man. Um the second you you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you better be friendly, man. You can't be all you can't be like a tyrant and shit. You gotta be friendly if you the leader, cause it's like, man, that nigga, bit, like a nigga I just kill you. A nigga I just kill your ass, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you gotta have a um, it, it, son just kill your ass. They ain't not gonna respect your authority. Yeah, yeah they don't. Respect. They don't respect rank. Yeah, it's not like yo, this the boss. We couldn't do nothing. We wouldn't even think about doing certain things because he has this position. That's just that not, that doesn't compute the sun man. Anybody uh, can get it. Anybody can get it. And and a lot of sun men is, is is that ain't the boss is tough as shit. Like you got young boys running around the neighborhood that's fifteen and sixteen that are completely unregulated by Whatever OGs in the hood and shit, whoever the OG is, that nigga has absolutely no pull or control over them young boys. You know what I'm saying? Them young boys is out here off the chain. Young black kids and the, 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 the team, what we call teens, they have OG. Uh, and OG, what the fuck he like? The fuck is some OG? Some old that they call them old niggas. Old nigga is a slur in the black community. Man. Yeah, that's a yeah. This old nigga think he running shit. Like fuck wrong with this nigga, dog. Yeah, like I, I just, I just, I think that man, maybe however y'all got it there, maybe that just like was like a a, a, a miracle of space that's and time. An exception. Yeah, aberration. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, not to cut you off, Rock, but you, you don't. I don't think people ever sit back and wonder why there is no like Sun Man version of of Mexico, or like you got the El Chapo nigga that's really got shit on lock, got a whole fucking crazy ass huge operation. What about Black Mafia family? Then that shit get disbanded. These black moms, yeah, that's the best thing you like, come up with. You gotta understand that, like BMF, that's still just a bunch of niggas. Like, it ain't like tight, like, like it ain't tight like that. Like, it's still some nigga that's dealing with a connect from Colombia or a connect from Mexico. The nigga ain't never the high top connect. The nigga always like getting his shit from somebody. 
he ain't the he ain't the last line of the food yep. ever. All these movies about these black kingpins, these niggas was getting shit from niggas in their own fucking town and shit half the time. They was getting shit from um some 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 higher drug dealer. Like when you look at when you when you look at Sun Man gangsters and shit, a lot of times and Italians too, a lot of times these are just hoodlums, man. They just hoodlums that happened to rise. Somebody had to be the big dog. Somebody had to, um, like, take Rayful Evans, right, from D.C. That nigga been, got locked up at 22. Okay? Like, that shit ain't, you ain't talking about, like, no long ass, like, these ain't like the old mobsters and shit sitting around and shit, like, that nigga got that little run, that run they talk about with Rayful Edmonds and all that. Um, he was he got locked up at 22. Shit was over at 22. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, niggas, niggas good for like a for like a nice. Uh, uh, it's it's a couple of niggas good for like a real crazy ass short little stretch where they really got shit. Cracking, but it's never on some super organized dynasty level type shit. Yeah, the nigga, the, a lot of niggas that even got it like that, their whole squad is a bunch of niggas, and they, 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 they getting shit on consignment and shit, and they they balling, but they. No Still structure, no discipline. Else and get some more keys and shit. Yeah. If, if you think them niggas is balling, like the the big beaches and all that shit, imagine what the connect doing. Like, we don't think about that nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they not supplying. No, in a, th these niggas is in the club every night, in the strip club every night. You can't run no international operation like that. Being in the strip club or shooting dice at the dice game and shit, you gotta be above a lot of shit to run a um a real syndicate. You gotta be above a lot of bullshit. You gotta meeting with people. You gotta have you gotta have a certain type of decorum with motherfuckers gonna oh. fuck with you in 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 and let you in certain rooms. A lot of rooms, I bet them Colombians, um, and them Cubans, they don't let niggas in certain rooms. And the drug it, and shit. It would be dumb if you just look. If you just look at how niggas act, you would be you would be a you wouldn't be a wise businessman to allow a sun man too too deep into your shit. Yeah. Listen, I'm a sun man, and 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 I and I give sun men all the credit in the world for being tough, man. I don't. I, I I'm not sitting here saying sun men is bitches or they soft or anything. That's not what they lacking. They're not lacking that. They lacking um honor and character and shit like that. But as far as like the toughness, they, they got that. But because they lack the honor and the character, and um they uh, moral lack, fortitude, uh, discipline. Yeah, the discipline. Yeah, and all that stuff. It it um they can't take advantage of their warrior's gene. The warrior gene that they got. It's kind of like useless um, when going against other groups. When when it as a group going against now as a unless you need a crash mano, dummy. Yeah, mano a mano, a sun man against another person one on one. Yeah, he's a problem. But a sun group against another group of uh, that's why everywhere there's a, everywhere there's Latinos, whether it's prison or the streets, niggas don't be wanting no problems. But if you put one sun man versus one Latino in a room, that sun man will put his thumb up that Latino butt. But it's like if you put a group of them, it's <laughs> another group. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be, the Latinos will win 99 times out of 100. Yep. Why you think niggas been saying, yo, we got to. We got to come together, bro. Like yeah. for years and decades, because they, we just, that's not us. That's not who we are as people. 
yeah, we know we don't have character, we don't have discipline, we don't have um, we don't have um, yeah, um, force of nate, force of character. For an unarmed carjacking outside of a hospital in the district turned deadly. Well, now the victim's family is speaking out. News 4's Ariel Hickson reports they're asking for justice to be served. Mm -hmm. That's right. Three months later, and the Gaines family is still living in a nightmare. They asked News 4 to hide their faces for privacy. It was just shocking, and we're still all in disbelief. 55-year-old Leslie Marie Gaines was getting dropped off outside the emergency room of MedStar Washington mm. Hospital Center for a checkup when the unthinkable happened. By the time I got to the hospital, my sister said somebody took the car with mommy in it. 22-year-old Kayla Brown was accused of stealing and then crashing the car with Gaines still in... Like, look at this crime. This is, this is the type of shit that sons do on the regular like she could be in the gang she could be part of the gang she could like be like her house could be the um stash house where y'all keep y'all guns at and shit and she just did this goofy ass shit you know what i'm saying it's like grand theft auto type <laughs> shit so now she locked up and shit on this shit and she part of your organization it just you can't you can't do shit with sons man uh -huh. My sister said somebody took the car with mommy in it. 22-year-old Kayla Brown was accused of stealing and then crashing the car with Gaines still inside. Gaines was pronounced dead following the crash. Do you believe that the suspect killed her? Yes. Brown made a court appearance in early June, but prosecutors dropped the charges of felony murder and kidnapping because the medical examiner couldn't rule on the cause of death of the passenger. Yeah. <laughs> So she gets to avoid a she she kid what she contact a woman who was being dropped off at the fucking hospital with allergy room. She runs up car Jackson right there, crashes the car with the lady inside, the lady dies, and the, they can't determine what killed her. That's some juice crew shit right there. And you might bump into this bitch at the grocery store. Law system. Of stealing and then crashing the car with Gaines still inside. Gaines was pronounced dead following the crash. Do you believe that the suspect killed her? Yes. Brown made a court appearance in early June, but prosecutors dropped the charges of felony murder and kidnapping because the medical examiner couldn't rule on the cause of death of the passenger. That will be the only thing is for us to have a medical examiner's report, find out what the cause of death is, so that additional charges can be filed.